till now we have seen the conservation of mass momentum and energy equation derivation the energy equation the energy equation can be written in cartesian coordinate for simplified case where q is equals to 0 and the you know viscous dissipation or pressure variation with time is negligible that can be written as del t del t plus u del t del x plus v del t del y plus w del t del z it is recommended that please you uh, keep writing all this Students, please keep making your own notes. And then in cylindrical coordinate, this is del T. The mass and u v w then will be uh, u r theta and you know <coughs> jet component of velocity so u del t del r plus v by r del t del theta plus w del t del z this equals to alpha del square t del r square plus 1 over r del t del r plus 1 over r square del square t del theta square plus del square t del z square and then a spherical coordinate <coughs> del t del t plus u del t del r plus v by r del t del Pi plus W R sine phi del T del theta equals to alpha divided by R square del del R R square. del t del r plus <clears throat> 1 over sin phi del del phi sin phi del t del phi plus 1 over sine square phi del square theta uh, del square t del theta square Okay, so this is with respect to uh, Cartesian cylindrical in Cartesian coordinate, you have this say x, y and g. So your u component, I mean u component is like this, y component v is like this and 
assembly component types. In cylindrical coordinate, suppose this is x, this is y coordinate and z, but our coordinate system is radial and then theta. So, so say this point, this so radial velocity is u and theta component of the velocity is v and z component of the velocity that will be w of this point. In a spherical coordinate, we have our cylindrical coordinate system like this, but we have u in r direction. So, for this uh, or any point you say, for the, you have u in this direction and then in the uh, theta, in the, in the, in the phi direction, in the phi direction, in the phi direction, you have v component of the velocity and w component is in the theta direction, theta direction. So, in theta direction, you have a w component of the okay. So, these equations uh, will be used in your computational heat transfer courses along with the Navier-Stokes uh, equations. Okay. So, this whole set makes a Navier-Stokes equation. Okay. Generally, it is called a Navier-Stokes, but also uh, there are people like uh, Navier, okay. uh, Cauchy, those who people are uh, studying solid mechanics, they will come to know more about this Cauchy name. Then Poisson also contributed to all these equations, Poisson. Then Saint Venant also contributed to these equations and Stokes. Okay. So, in sense you can say Navier, Cauchy, Poisson, Saint Venant, Stokes equations, but popularly called as Navier Stokes equations. Navier gave the forms of the equation and Stokes gave the relationships which we have seen as a Stokes hypothesis and like. Okay. So, please make a note of these uh, things. Now, a general procedure in a CFD, general procedure, general procedure in CFD. So, first thing is a Generally, what do you do in CFD is that, or in a CHT course, first you identify the domain, okay. This is a repetition again. We have to identify a domain, physical domain. So, it is called a domain identification. And once you identify the domain, you have to create a geometry. You have to create a geometry. Okay. So, domain identification and geometry creation is a first, first step where what do you do is we convert our physical domain, physical domain into a computational domain into a computational domain. Okay. Physical domain is converted into computational domain. Then second thing what do you do is now we want to solve this uh, problem in a on a computational domain. So, we generate a grid. 
okay meshing it is called as meshing converting this computational domain into very uh, small subdomains meshing that is called as meshing okay meshing is converting computational domain domain into subdomains okay this meshing meshes can be of meshes can be structured or unstructured structured or unstructured now what what do you mean by structured and unstructured means say for example if you have this domain then the domain will be uh, you know converted into subdomains like this now to every uh, sale say we are talking about this you will have a fixed number of neighbors okay like this is our neighbor to this red one uh, another neighbor is this one another neighbor is this one okay another neighbor is this one also these are also neighbors okay these also neighbors so these neighbors remains uh, you know same you can identify the neighbors and you can specifically write this in terms of ijk indexes you can write this system in terms of ij ij kind of indexes okay you can represent them so as you uh, know that all the uh, neighbors going to be same you can say that this is my i cell then you can say that this is i plus 1 cell likewise you can identify the cells by using ij this is a structured structured mesh while on the other side the unstructured mesh the unstructured mesh the things are opposite okay. unstructured mesh can be generated in a various manners the elements can be of various size right. so there is no proper structure uh, of uh, you know uh, converting the domain into subdomain now for this particular red one how many neighbors are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay but if you consider any one uh, here and another now you for this number of neighbors are 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay but if you consider any other any other it may have some different numbers suppose you consider now this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 4, 5, 6, 7 neighbors are there. So, we are not sure where in case of unstructured meshes that there is a fixed structure is present. But here fixed structure is present. Now, if you move to any other, any other, uh, you know, inside domain kind of uh, this thing, then you have same number of neighbors. If you count them, they will be same numbers. Here, that is not the facility. So, you cannot uh designate these elements these elements uh, in terms of ij okay so here node connectivity information is very important node connectivity so every node say for example if you consider this element this is a one node for which you need to know the connectivity of the corresponding okay so for this node 
देर मे बी वन टू थ्री नोट कनेक्टेड फॉर दिस मे बी वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव नोट आर कनेक्टेड नोट कनेक्टिविटी इंफॉर्मेशन नोट कनेक्टिविटी इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड इट इज कॉल्ड अनस्ट्रक्चर्ड ओके सो इंस्ट्रक्चर्ड यू हैव फिक्स नंबर ऑफ नेबर्स एंड दे कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड आई जे in unstructured you do not have fixed number of neighbors neighbors can be any and ij indexing is not used in unstructured okay creating unstructured grid is very easy this is third advantage it is very easy okay they are the easy okay not time consuming not टाइम कंज्यूमिंग दिज आर डिफिकल्ट ओके डिफिकल्ट फॉर कॉम्प्लेक्स जोमेट्रीज डिफिकल्ट फॉर कॉम्प्लेक्स जोमेट्री एंड टाइम कंज्यूमिंग However, these unstructured grids are so. Uh, these are very popular nowadays, and these are generally used for uh, getting good solutions. So, so accuracy is good here. Good accuracy. Good accuracy in the solution. Uh, you know, so little, you know, bad accuracy. okay so taking the advantage of good accuracy uh, people prefer in academic you know <coughs> if you want good accurate results this but if you are very if you having very complicated geometry so you have to make a judge, judgment and uh, you have to optimize either you want to go for this or this based on the problem to problem you can select either unstructured grid or you can select structured grid okay so once you do the meshing decided the meshing next thing third thing you have to do is <coughs> governing questions okay physics decide about the governing questions so now governing questions we know governing questions are conservation of mass momentum and energy okay so these essentially uh, they describe the physics they describe the physics okay here you need to give to assign fluid properties uh boundary conditions or initial conditions Okay, so once you have decided the type of the governing equations you are solving to uh, you know describe a particular physics, you specify boundary condition, initial conditions, and then finally what do you do? We solve the equations. Solve the equations. Okay, so any software if you use it, it does like this. So you initialize. in you initialize the solution that is you give the initial conditions and then you solve with that initial conditions and boundary conditions initialize with 
initial condition and boundary condition. Initialize means initialize with initial conditions and boundary conditions and then solve. And then uh, once you solve these equations, while solving these equations, you monitor them, monitor the equation, monitor the progress, monitor the progress of solution. Mo monitor the progress during the solution. And uh, then after that, if you see that while monitoring, you see that the progress is good, then you print it, print the solution, okay, okay. Or, or what do you do is you modify, otherwise you modify, modify. So, modify, either you would like to reinitialize, resolve and again monitor or maybe you have, to, you have to go, you have to modify your grid, okay, you may be needed to modify the domain, you may be needed to modify the mesh, okay, modify the Gorn equations or things like that and then again initialize, solve, monitor and print and plot, okay. So, print and plot is a final. So, we can write here, if everything is successful, finally you have to print and plot. So, those who have gone through this computational laboratory, they might have uh, come across with this, uh, you know, steps. They may be feeling um, little corner, you know, familiarity with this kind of procedure, though may not be exactly. Okay. Now, print and plot. Okay, before that, monitor. What do we monitor? What do you mean by monitor? Okay, so in the monitor phase, either we monitor the convergence. Okay, solutions are generally iterative. So, whether I am getting my solution from this initial case or not, I have to con see monitor, okay. Monitor means I have to see those, uh, whether these things are happening or converging or not, okay. So, monitoring in terms of convergence and second monitoring is in terms of grid independence. So, whatever the grid which I have chosen, grid and time independence time independence. So, whatever grid I have chosen and whatever time step I have chosen, it is independent of, I mean my solution is independent of this grid and time step or not, okay, that you have to check. If you are solution is dependent on grid, then that is not a correct solution. So, you should only represent those solution which are grid and time step independent, okay. If you produce any result for any grid and any time step, anybody can come refine the grid and refine the time step and he may get different results. So, those results, those solutions are not unique solutions. We want unique solution which may not be changing by changing any other parameter. So, we are interested only in grid and time. Print and plot. So, well, how do we print? We print in terms of x and y plots. Many of you have seen x and y plot, variation of, you know, dependent variable in terms of independent variable, those functional relationship in terms of graph you have seen as a xy plots. Now, there is another category which is called as contour. Contours, okay. What do you mean by contours? Contours is a, is a line 
on which the value of the variable the value of the variable is same okay suppose i say that this is suppose in this domain in this computational domain if i say that this is a contour this is a contour okay if this is a contour line then it means that at every point it has the same value here 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 anywhere all these 1 2 3 4 5 they have a same value if any other uh, contour is there in between this has a different value than this red one okay and on this green one every point every point has a same value okay so contour is a line or a curve which which has a same value on it okay so you may have another contour like this okay this contour is having a same value different value than this green red but on this curve every point has a same value that is called as contour please remember these definitions very important many experts in this cfd area also they do not know the meaning of contours this is a bad situation okay and then we have a vector plot so vector plot gives you information about the vector field so vector is represented by its unique magnitude and unique direction so vector plots may look like suppose in this domain the flow is flowing from left to right or flow is flowing in a diagonal direction then we know that the vectors should point in the diagonal direction so the vectors can be you know shown like this now the magnitude of the vector is represented by the length of the arrow this length of this so this is having higher magnitude compared to this and third will have a lower magnitude but direction is in the diagonal direction you may have another vectors uh, you know having you know different different uh, magnitudes and like that showing uh, a particular so the information regarding where the flow is going you know in which direction my flow is going you can see from the vector plot so they can also be a good you know source of information so plotting is very important in order to see the flow okay so when you see in a nature that okay uh, the tornado for example how tornado swirls so that kind of things you can see physically but in cfd everything is numbers and this thing so we convert that number into some sort of visualization flow visualization is very very important flow means it is a either a flow of fluid or a flow of heat so heat transfer or fluid flow okay heat flow mass flow so all flows are there so these flows can be visualized using this type of plottings through these contour plots x y plots and there are many other kind of you know uh, iso surfaces and many other you know unique techniques are there and that is called as art in cfd if you are good in art you can uh, you know describe the visualize the flow as good as possible okay this is a general procedure hope you got some idea on this okay now we move on to something called as conservative body force field
कॉन्जर्वेटिव बॉडी फोर्स फिल्म कॉन्जर्वेटिव बॉडी फोर्स फील्ड वॉट इज कॉन्जर्वेटिव बॉडी फोर्स फील्ड ओके सो इट हैज अ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स नंबर वन इट कैन बी एक्सप्रेस कैन बी एक्सप्रेस कैन बी एक्सप्रेस एज ए ग्रेडियंट ऑफ एज ए ग्रेडियंट ऑफ ग्रेडियंट ऑफ स्केलर पोटेंशियल पोटेंशियल if you can uh, if certain force field is there and you can express that force field in terms of gradient of a potential then it is a conservative body force field okay or also it has a character work done by such force work done by such a force such a force in a closed path okay in a closed path <clears throat> path is zero then we say that that force field is a conservative force field now examples of this conservative force field is any you know uh, frictionless force frictionless force frictionless force arising from gravitational arising this body forces arising from gravitational or magnetic gravitational or magnet <coughs> gravitation or magnetism gravitation or magnetism so we are interested in this uh, gravity force we are not considering magnetism in we haven't considered you know no conservation equation related to and we haven't considered that as a, in the body force but we had consider this gravitation so regarding that this conservative for conservative body force field we are going to this so thus uh, since my chi was the body force per unit volume so we can write thus this chi in our conservation of momentum equation we can write it like a gradient of a phi okay so the terms like gradient of pressure plus chi can be now written as gradient of a pressure negative minus gradient of phi i can take out the gradient term and p plus phi can be uh, put inside and now i can say that p plus phi is my gradient p bar okay so i can now combine this body force in a pressure term and i can write my uh, navier's equation like this so my navier's equation will become del t plus u dot gradient of u is equals to now i don't have to write that chi so i am writing this p p bar or generally you will see p only so you won't see many times this chi in a variety of you know governing equations because they consider that that equation is for conservative body force field <coughs> mu del square and uh, u okay so this becomes your momentum equation so we'll be using this equation so that is the reason i just gave an information that uh, we are now going to uh, go in this particular
we are going to use this particular form of equation. Now, after this, now I would like to write all these equations again. Don't hesitate to write these equations. Okay, more you write these equations, you are going to remember these equations very often. Since this is an online mode, don't think that you are just going to write. Okay, so for Cartesian, uh, why should we talk about any coordinate system? So, Navier Stokes, Navier Stokes equations, equations. in a coordinate form, uh, coordinate free, coordinate free form. Okay. So how I can write them? So again, I'm writing del dot u as it goes to zero. This is our first equation and we have the second equation, but we have three uh, set of three sets in that. This is your momentum equation. Please keep writing. Don't hesitate to write. Your active participation is very, very important. There is no pressure term in energy equation and we have K del square T. So this is a very simple, uh, hello, very simple, you know, looking these equations, three form. They are free form, no coordinate system. That is the beauty of this vector notations compact okay maths is about compactness most of the time we want things to become more compact if you write them in a particular coordinate system thus it takes a lot of space so say for example for 2d 2d cartesian but keep writing okay for 2d cartesian your equations will become del u del x plus del v del y equals to zero. First equation will become like this. And the second equation, since it is a 2D, this equation will become two equations. So one will be rho del u del t plus u del u del x plus v del u del y is equals to minus del p del x. Now we are simply writing p, okay. p means p plus that, uh, you know, phi. So gravity is also brought in in this pressure. Plus mu and del square u del x square plus del square u del y square okay second equation in del v del t plus u del v del x please keep writing del v del y is equals to negative del p del y plus mu del square v del x square plus del square v del y square okay so you got two equations for 2d and next energy equation 
that energy equations rho Cp you get del T del T plus u del T del x plus v del T del y is equals to k del square t del x square plus del square t del y square. These equations are for uh, you know incompressible flow uh, where mu k rho these are cp these are assumed to be constant okay there is no heat generation there is no viscous dissipation there are no compressibility effects okay so this is a very you know uh, so which one is compact this one or this one so obviously this gives a more general picture but this will be you will have to always expand okay since we are working in in in, in understanding purpose we need to understand more in terms of this expanded version. So keep writing. Don't bother to write. More you write, more you remember. Okay. So now knowing these equations, uh, here you u what is the unit of velocity u u unit is meter per second right similarly x is in meter si units so everything is in unit density rho you have kg per meter cube likewise everything temperature is in kelvin okay capital k all the variables they are having units okay they are having certain units now can i derive these set of equations in a non-dimensional form i do not want any dimension for my dependent variable my dependent variable or for independent variable i do not want any dimension can i get this certain set of expression or this certain of certain set of expressions, both this set of expressions in terms of non-dimensional form. So that is our next target, non-dimensionalization of next topic is non-dimensionalization of governing equations. Okay, non-dimensionalization. Dimensionalization. Lization of governing equations any governing equations okay right now we are talking about mass momentum and energy governing equation so once you show for one or two type of equations the procedure remains same why do we need non-dimensionalizations okay why do we need why non-dimensionalization Why non-dimensionalization? So, number one reason is it allows us us to scale the dependent and independent variables what am I writing? dependent dependent variables from 0 to 1 or or in bracket or small ratio small number which is a ratio 
okay from 0 to 1 unit no unit is there so there is no mention of unit so it's only unit 0 unit 1 unit no unit okay unit means no unit 0 to 1 okay so what is the use of converting anything into 0 to 1 so this helps in computation this helps in minimizing round of errors round of errors i i already told about round of errors okay so minimizing the round of errors which may arise during the computation which may arise during computations during the computations okay so if you see many cfd people they will always normalize these equations or non dimensionalize these equations and they will do simulation so as to get good accurate results okay that is if you ask these things also many cfd experts do not know so what it again does that you know from your uh, fluid mechanics already learned these things in fluid mechanics what it does it clubs the parameters it clubs okay it clubs the clubs the parameters parameters properties and variables in a in a unique non dimensional number okay so by doing this what do we do is so we we by clubbing that thus we minimize minimize the number of numerical experiments numerical experiments need to be done minimize the number of numerical experiments to be performed okay so once you club you don't have to uh, change the different different parameters different different you know properties uh, if you have suppose parameter 1 property 2 and variable 3 5 1 5 2 5 3 then you have to combine this maybe 5 1 is changing from some value 5 2 is changing from 3 set values and 5 3 is changing from 3 set values so you, if you combine this permutation and combinations your number of experiments will increase so uh, other than that if you combine them into a non dimensional number and you adjust those properties such a way that only non -di this dimensionless number is changed then you do not have to perform those many uh, experiments while doing one experiment you can combine the effect of all these parameters and properties and variables so you reduce the number of computation by clubbing them into a single non dimensional number okay now third thing is the results obtained the results obtained in non dimensional form results obtained in terms of in terms of non dimensional numbers non dimensional numbers dimensional numbers numbers are applicable applicable for all the fluids all the fluids 
okay so what do you mean by this suppose i have a i have created a reynolds number you know the reynolds number right reynolds number re reynolds number if this reynolds number is say 100 okay now how do i get this 100 i know that rho v d and mu if i combine a property rho variable v and any other parameter or variable uh, d and property mu such a way that i get 100 now it is it doesn't matter whether i am taking i am talking about air or fluid uh, any other fluid air or water okay i can take in if i have re 100 it means that whatever result i got they are you know independent of the type of the fluid okay so i can change such a way that you know these results can become same okay if rho and mu of air is taken i can choose v such a way that i get re100 for water rho and mu will be different so d is constant so i can choose a different v such a way that i get 100 okay so you combine this so whatever you say is that whatever the result i got a generalized result this for example now i want to interpret this result for air then i substitute the values of this and then interpret ac accordingly okay so whatever results you get is generalized it is irrespective of the uh, fluid that is a great advantage with non dimensionalization okay and in terms of cfd you should remember that this first point is very very important other two we know from our uh, fluid mechanics okay so it brings in generality of the result okay thus the results are more general general so that is the reason you see in uh, heat transfer those who have studied they most of the most of the time they might have seen re is a function of you know nusselt is a function of re and prandtl number nusselt is a function of re and prandtl number this kind of correlations you must have seen so now these correlations are independent of the fluid okay you can apply for any any if same thing is happening water is flowing here and uh, i want to know what is my h here then i can use whether it is the air or whether it is the water i can use the same correlations available if i am satisfying the range in which re and pr is specified okay now we'll move on to uh, non dimensionalization okay so in non dimensionalization we should be uh, you know careful about the characteristics or some reference velocities characteristic lengths reference pressure or reference temperature differences okay these are very important thing okay so characteristic length suppose we have a channel having the width having the width h and length l now what is the characteristic of this particular uh, you know channel for example so characteristic dimension is the dimension over which the major you know phenomena happens so in this particular case if you uh, 
recall your uh, fluid mechanics the fluid uh, there is a variation of this velocity in the y direction suppose this is a x x direction suppose this is x direction and the y direction is here then you see that u is a function of y only it is not a function of l so the characteristic dimension in this case can be a channel height okay so length characteristic length can be a uh, height of the channel diameter of the pipe you know like that if it is a if cylinder is there in a channel then diameter of the cylinder will becomes the characteristic uh, you know dimension so choosing a characteristic length is very important then reference velocity reference velocity velocity so say in this uh, flow you you have the max maximum velocity you know, at uh, there is a velocity it may not be maximum there is a velocity at the inlet okay u in so there is a velocity at the inlet so you can specify that as a reference velocity any velocity as a reference velocity so u in can be specified as a reference velocity then reference pressure how we can uh, specify the reference pressure so we know that we have this dynamic pressure we have heard about this dynamic pressure right so how do you write this dynamic pressure rho into uh, velocity square by 2 okay so uh, i can write the reference pressure without i mean considering that by 2 like this so rho u square u in square in inlet velocity square can be represented as a reference pressure and then for temperature so for length we have taken for velocity we have taken for pressure we have taken why you are taking for length velocity and pressure in a navier's equation we have x y these are lengths u v these are velocities and in the u v momentum equation we have a pressure and then in a temperature uh, energy equation we have a temperature so we need to take reference temperature difference okay so reference temperature difference means suppose heat is this surface is at temperature ts and this fluid is at temperature t infinity then we only see the uh, you know uh, temperature difference is of t infinity minus ts okay so you have to be careful you have to choose certain temperature difference a proper value okay we'll see what can be the you know this temperature it need not be always t infinity minus ts it can be tf minus ts it depends upon the problem you have to identify what can be my scaling u v pressure and we had this variable t now what is my objective my ob this is in this is in certain unit this is in certain unit this is meter per second and likewise they are all in units okay now i want to convert them into some unit less i want them to convert into some unit less quantity which x star y star y star u star v star 
पी स्टार एंड टी स्टार ओके दैट इज अवर ऑब्जेक्टिव नाउ इन दिस केस दे आर ऑल यूनिटलेस वी वॉन्ट टू कन्वर्ट देम इन टू यूनिटलेस क्वान्टिटी ओके एक्स स्टार इज हैविंग नो यूनिट नाउ हाई हाउ आई कैन मेक एक्स स्टार यूनिटलेस हाउ आई कैन मेक एक्स स्टार यूनिटलेस सो टू गेट एक्स स्टार यूनिटलेस आई हैव वट इज एक्स आई हैव एक्स एंड नाउ आई वॉन्ट टू convert this x into uh, some x star so how i can uh, change meter i uh, you know cut meter from this x meter so for that you we have uh, this characteristic length coming into picture so you divide that dimension by the characteristic length you get x star is equals to a dimensional dimensionless quantity it is it is now having no dimension also if x is equals to 0 what is x star x star is equals to 0 okay now we are talking about say and if x is equals to h which is a maximum uh, if you are considering uh, then x star will be equal to 1 similarly y y star can be obtained by not you know scaling with characteristic length and y is equals to 0 x star will uh, y star will be equals to 0 and y is equals to h y star will be equals to 1 so you see we are scaling them from 0 to 1 0 to 1 similarly u star u star will be equals to it has to be scaled with the reference velocity reference velocity is u in now they are not any having they are not having any unit so say if uh, u is equals to 0 then u star will be equals to 0 u is equals to u inlet then u star will be equals to 1 similarly v star okay similarly about v star now what about pressure p star p star is equals to p divided by rho u in square okay so uh, you you have suppose p is equals to 0 then you uh, know uh, and p is equals to rho u in square you get 0 to 1 okay that is also possible so p star can be 0 p star can be 1 now about temperature now about temperature okay t star t star is equals to can you write like t divided by this temperature difference t infinity minus ts now here you see this is not okay this is not okay here it was okay but here it is we are talking about temperature differences so this is not okay okay so you see although it is a k by k their units gone so it becomes unitless okay but it is not okay because if you substitute t is equals to you know zero uh, or it it is going to t star going to zero but t is equals to t infinity minus ts has to be substituted so rather than saying that it is appropriate to write this in a manner t minus ts in a difference only t has to be written in terms of difference so t minus ts t infinity minus ts i have written this such a way that if i substitute t is equals to what is the smallest suppose this is ts t if t is equals to ts then t star will be equals to 0 and t if t is equals to t infinity then t star will be equal to 1 please note this okay many times student makes mistake they just write t and t infinity minus ts and they go ahead with that because here we have developed that you know logic but here we are talking about temperature differences so you also take a ratio in terms of temperature differences 
okay that is the important thing so this is the way uh, we generally non dimensionalize the variables okay now using these non dimensional variables x star y star u star p star v star t star definitions we want to convert these equations these equations in terms of u star u star v star okay this equation in terms of u star v star p star this equation in terms of u star t star v star okay can i convert non dimensionalize these equations that is our objective and that we will consider in next class